wait. Okay, so peace and blessings upon everybody here. Um, so um, <clears throat> today's topic in our Divana ish. Everyone can hear me clearly because I have this tucked in. Yeah. Today's topic, um, as per um, what Louisa and I went over, was um, unmasked. We didn't actually have like an idea, of, you know, how we would go about that because <laughs> we don't want to have it masked and in any way sort of uh, um, prepared in that way. So that way we can be as unmasked as possible in like a more organic energy. And that's what we want to do, especially in this space where, where it's um, free flow. It's... Um, spontaneous, organic, unscripted, raw. That's what we're aiming for. And um, and we're going to try to embody that through the smaller and bigger practices that show up and our way of being. Um, that said, um, Louisa, you want to say something? Yeah, even just before we started this call, we were like, we don't really have a plan. Do you hear me? Now? Now you can hear me. Good. So, yeah, like Alicia mentioned, we haven't really structured this either to be um, as raw as possible. And uh, I suppose it's always a uh, question that's present and uh, or should be present for the seeker archetype and uh, I guess more or less to people uh, throughout their lives in various uh, times it's going to be more or less present but I think for both Alicia and I it's been a, a theme that's been very sort of um, on the surface the last I don't know, weeks, months, years, probably. Um, what does it mean to be authentic? What does it mean to be yourself? What does it mean to appear as you are? And I think we both also come as seekers to this theme because it's, uh, it's a multifaceted one, as is probably every theme if you look into it deeply enough but um i guess open just to to delve into this and see what uh what comes up for for you all i don't know alicia if you wanted to say anything more before we like yeah, I mean, that goes, thank you for that. Um, and that goes for basically um, all the topics that we are on board here with, um, how they basically are, um, how the inspiration comes and then we're, we're seekers in every aspect of it. Nowhere, no, nowhere close to knowing or uh, embodying, but just a desire to bring that into our lives and, and then sharing that kind of... Uh, sentiment and uh, subject matter with with within the space um we can maybe start off with a more um spontaneous what does unmask mean to you? what's what are the words that come to you when you hear that and maybe we can go around if anyone wants to begin just um unmask and unmute Um, grief and anger come up when I feel like unmasked. Yeah, two emotions that we tend to mask, like grief and anger. That's the 
few things that I was thinking about. Did you say grief and anger? Okay, let's yes. let's jot these down. Um, also, when you sent the video, I don't know whether it was Luisa or uh, Alicia, the one in people are in a circle, and they're they're stating their intentions. I thought like I could I could be this woman, yani, in in these spaces, you know, and then like that's <laughs> what's so funny to me. Yeah, it's and like the, there's just this pressure. So it was the uh, I don't know that's being math. But yeah, that that's very relatable. And sometimes in the spaces you're in, you just you know feel like we were supposed to connect and be spiritual. Like there's also this uh, persona that comes up, which uh, yeah. But beneath it, I feel there's a lot of anger and grief. Yeah, uh, a sense of right and wrong, or a sense of uh, even control within the space, right? Um, maybe due to uh, specific ideals that have surfaced in in sacred spaces. Um, and um, I think in my personal experience, all ideals have to be let go on the path, like literally. Um, the written and the unwritten, um, doctrinal and... Um, scriptural same thing um yeah not to deny but just to let go because it's anytime we get attached to um specific ideals on ways of being or doing then there's a level of masking involved and you could lose your authenticity in it um yeah Who else would like to say what comes up? For me, when we were uh, using the term unmasking, I suddenly had this uh, uh, image of fruits and banana. <laughs> Right, so for me, was unmasking is courage, and underneath there's beauty. So that courage and beauty is what came for me, or authenticity, or the essence. I think for me, what came was, um, yeah, sort of to be uncompromising in a way and to not aspire likability, <laughs> like to, to not aspire to be liked by others. Yeah. Yeah, that's a powerful one, the second, the latter. Um because we could lose authenticity in the in the pursuit of likability, mm -hmm. right? You lose your truths on the way. In the name of truth, you lose your truths. Yeah. Um, perfectionism just trying to be perfect and saying the right words and filling up the space
um, what comes up for me is keeping my blinders on um, while remaining cognizant to the environment, um, but still keeping my um, blinders on and unapologetically just being and doing. And I think for me, what comes up is sitting with myself, sitting with what is, and I think that's even before sitting with or showing that to anyone else, that would be just accepting the unmasked me, myself. Louisa, um, do you have a suggested poem uh, for today? No. So, do you have one, or should I find one? I don't want you to find one. <laughs> Reason being is because we have a prompt, and that's sort of like creating a mask in a way, because we're tr trying to be in alignment too. How about we just without a prompt, you know, based on whatever we're feeling into the subject matter, uh, we can have a 10 minute penning um, session where we're just quietly in the zone and uh, we can do that. Um, the prompt basically would be no prompt. It's just going into the subject, um, you know, however it's coming through you, the topic of uh, uh, being unmasked. What does that mean? What does that feel like? Um, yeah.
Is everyone almost done or still we need a okay. few minutes? A few more minutes. So should I take it as a sign that when people put on their camera, they're done? Yeah, I think everyone's just could care less now about any rules and they're just going on <laughs> writing and writing. I yeah, actually ignored your, yeah, on. I know, I know. So, yeah. Well, I think since you and maybe Mehtab are the ones that are Just a bit louder. go ahead when, yeah. whenever you're ready. Okay. So do we have anyone who would like to share their uh, unmasked penning, their topic on this, um, their penning on this topic? If you'd like to go ahead, then just... Unmute, please. I was uh, volunteering May, but I can go. <laughs> okay. I was uh, paying retro, whatever the Hunger Games says. I was paying you tribute. <laughs> okay, this man, I'm on him.
What does it mean to be unmasked? What does it feel like? Not to wear a mask, not to have an answer, not to be perfect, trying to fulfill someone else's need, showing up always as I think I should for the space. The space needs life, so I show up lively. The space needs truth, so I show up telling the truth. The space needs answers, so I show up with answers. The space controlling what I pull from the inside to ask me which face must put must I put on today? Which, who, what part of me must I dig out? To take the mask off of showing up how others need me, taking the mask off, what is that like? To have my own expression on my face, if today is bitter or today is better, even the job asks of me to be a certain way. What does it feel like to not have the answers for everyone? What does it feel like? What does it look like? Who is under here? Even this writing, explaining my truth, I wonder how it would feel to not take up all the space in the room. I wonder how it would feel to not get it right. And it's okay. I wonder how it would feel to tell the truth that I am sad at times and happy, that I love laughing at myself and my imperfections, that I am crazy and spicy and feisty and is so much fun actually being me, that I am mean, not that I wanna hurt you or them, but I wanna give it to you because you need to get it sometimes. And I need to get it sometimes too. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> how come, how some, oh, how courageous would I be to walk around without the mask of perfection? Not trying to give something. Oh, give dawa. I'm Muslim. Uh, Muslims are seen as this, so I should act this way. I have fought for so long the, that the best part of me is human, not a hijab as a cape, not the face that I didn't create, not these words I write on this page. I get to be imperfect. I mumbo jumbo my words until I get it right. I stutter at times. I scream. I be screaming. I also am willing to fight, even if it doesn't always have to get there. I don't want to be subjected or put myself in a realm to have you pick or reject me and cry. I love crying. I love crying and feeling. I love being bold. I love putting down my nafs and being humbled without being humiliated. I talk a lot. I love telling stories and listening. I love speaking up and out. And sometimes I want to listen. Sometimes nothing is wrong. And sometimes something is wrong. And that is for me. Because I want to control when I do something. Total self-control. Total self-choice. Yes, I want to be pleasing to my Lord and not punished. But for some reason, this time... He is with me, and if he is in me and with me, then this unmasking is already for him because he knows what it is. He knows the truth and the shadow. Unmasking is for me, which automatically makes it for him. When will I start? Did I already start? And sometimes I take on and take off the mask. Probably this was my long Oh, this was long, and I probably most likely have more to say because I'm just like that. I could go on and on and on. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah.
Anybody else would like to go? I can go. It's not so long. <laughs> um, should I start? Can you even hear me? Is it on? Yeah. Okay. Um, being and doing, perceived not as I appeared, playing along, giving grace to the eyes and interpretations, patience as a practice of peace, knowing myself is the only relief, the anchor steadying me in waves of judgment, shaped by storms thousands of miles away. Beware of slipping, of sacrifice undeserved, of truth and appearance interchanged. At the end of the day, to take off your robe of images and thoughts, rest naked, witness me. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I can say love is light. I have been traversing the dark alleys until light struck one, blinded by light at first and later by the dark. Love has a way of making you hate yourself. Too naked and too naked is a thing. There is a face and a few more some unrecognizable so you take a step into the lake as love ushers you in the hammam slowly washing you of yourself love pro love love promise to love you show you how you never seen yourself layer by layer radical and rational insane and plain sacred and seductress Mature and immature, nice and bitter, lies and truth, giver and taker, manipulated and manipulator, preacher and follower, silent and loud, activist and anarchist, puppet and puppeteer, actor and director. Till you come to a full circle from you to you. And those are key words from you to you. Thank you. can go um what is the mask to be unmasked lower your voice join the choir and mask distract your shelf from that that is a mask body senses masks projections and argumentations masks back to the intellect a mask agenda driven by my own guilt and loss of purpose a mask fall back asleep a mask to be unmasked, 
to feel that utter lostness, that burst of anger ripping your skin deeper with, into your own vulnerability, that ego that insists I am right, my way is the way, and seeking validation to keep that mask unmasked. Salam, salam, from that recitation of hate before we sleep, and that's done what's done behind closed doors. Jumps of joy at the sight of a loved one and songs of longing for that who is not there and never will be. In reality, not knowing what you are doing and that fear, that anxiety and panic attack of wearing that mask to de deluding yourself into thinking it is you. Unmask me to me so I may be true to how you see me for aren't you the only one who sees my heart? Unmask. A journey to be that aware of the gaze that is through all the lies of every moment. Shukriya, as they say in India. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, are you ready to unmask yourself? I don't know if that's a good question. Um, I don't know if we're ever ready, but first of all, do you hear me or is it still an issue? Okay. Um. Stripping down layers of guilt, shame, conditions, the conditional love I ought to give myself is what I have the strength to muster for you. You crave me unmasked. I fear you'll not like what you'd see, so I hide in plain sight, veiled by something just so slight that you feel, taste, touch, that there's something between you and me. To be unmasked in front of you, I'd have to accept death and defeat. Because the truth is far from a shiny surface. Can we call it beauty? What heart can embrace the black and the white? What heart can embrace the filth and the gold? Unmasked I'll be before my Lord. And then there was another one. Sometimes after I've cried and raged and I lie unraveled, disheveled, you silently look at me and you place your hand on me. You've yet learned how to judge me. For now you teach me what it is to be an ocean of mercy. And that's for my son. I didn't hear the last... Uh after beauty was it after beauty just just your last line no sorry just the last line <clears throat> you teach me what it is to be an ocean of mercy okay. thank you i guess that leaves me okay <laughs> unmasked Illa ana, illa anta. But me, but reality. There is something called life that we came to experience with our soul in this physical body. Free spirited souls came to unshackle themselves from the burden of conditionings from birth onwards. We picked up do's and don'ts, rules of engagement, conduct, social etiquette. We understand, and still do, uh, that takes us from animal-like beings to evolved human. Perfect woman, no such thing. Be like this, be like that. Drop those lies, be like you. When in time, sorry, when in Rome, be like the Romans. Why, though, I question. This inability to assimilate, fit in, follow trends, ideas, school rules, rules, that took us further away from our heart. Mind is key to keep masses masked. 
follow the leader. Meat or vegan, how about both? When I feel so or don't. Like likeability, says Alex. I couldn't agree more. Sick of pleasers and pleasing. I'm not into appeasing. The tease of men or women. Do what you like. Your Lord sees all. Am I vo am I vomiting words, perhaps? Is unmasked a trigger, a shadow for inner work addicts? Dropping ideals like missiles gone ballistic. Being masked leads to misery. In all areas of life, my soul says, be you. That's the most beautiful, most enlightened way of being. We drop ideals, ideas we made into idols, worshipping them as if written in stone. I'll rewrite on a new slate like caveman days. Rock art can be reiterated and redone. A new slate. Old school was cool. Lessons taught on a blackboard, erased after a few minutes. Non-attachment to knowledge. Retain only what is necessary. Stop hoarding information. I want beingness, not grades. To remain unmasked, I shall dress as I desire. Speak my inner fire. Flow with the wind. Resist schedules. Show up in my body and naturally fe natural features. Raw beauty as the artist's design. I choose to embrace the as-is, the organic, the flaws. My daughter taught me flaws are the new perfection. These children, my teachers, who question lies and constructs, and when they see me masked, remind me who is who. Back to love, our way home. We return unmasked. That is the goal. Not to deadlines and strict rules. Say no politely. Stepping away from what serves me not, guilt-free. Toxic compassion is not our path. Setting boundaries without country borders. I choose to travel to far-off lands, mixing with cultures and languages, as if I was them. This is not othering. This is removing mask, the masks of duality. I want to love all humanity. And that can be so when we unmask the masks. Mind control is masked. We behave as they schooled us to. Institutes demand answers. How about we replay this mantra of eternal truth? The very step, the very first step of the way, I know nothing. Illa who, we are who, until so we are masked. The end. I love the whiteboard analogy. Detachment to learning. Yeah, they would give a lot of lessons. And then next thing you know, it's like erase everything. And we could never imagine that. We have so much, um, we have Google Classroom. We have so much data saved that we never use. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah. So that's um yeah. What are we at now? Oh we have Khatija here. Alhamdulillah. I think that was nice that we did a penning session without a poem prompt. Um It's great we did penning but like on a practical level <laughs> these are just like ideas like are we act like what what is it right now maybe in our life today this week that um we're facing in the form of a challenge where we are um confronted with being masked or unmasked and what are we choosing so maybe if we could 
I mean, depending on the time, Louisa, I mean, I think uh, there should be a little maybe practical discussion that we can uh, that we can do, right? Rather than just penning, <laughs> like how does that help us? Um, uh, you know, what what is it right now that uh, prevents us from unmasking or requires us to mask? Um, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a good, of course, question to raise. I wonder if it's, um, if it's something that um, is possible to do in a short time, but I guess the, the most kind of from the top of your head thing. I have to feed this little monster next to me. Sure. Okay. Uh, maybe you know. Obviously, it's 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 complex because you know uh, it's not that simple. But maybe we can just go into the present moment and see what is it. You know what what is what is the trigger or what is it that's causing us to be masked? Like, how am I being masked right now? For example, is there something that's putting like creating that effect? Um, that is right now currently at play in our life. Maybe that one thing we can talk about, just be really honest about it. If you'd like to be. I think <laughs> for me, um, even I was thinking about this day before yesterday that uh, in this, these type of problems mostly come in our professional space where there are, certain expectations already set and so for example if I was uh, if you have like a gap right and how do you how if you say for example you took the gap from work and you're at this interview how would you justify that you okay you probably you were sick or or you were attending your ailing parents Right, these don't translate as a, a positive or powerful narrative. Nobody likes a weak spot. So I was, so there's a lot of covering of the weak spot or vulnerabilities. You probably have, like my brother was saying, that you probably have some strong statement, you know, set up uh, instead of such things. So, so yeah, you the. In certain spaces, you can't really be real. So that's something that I find we can reflect on. Does anybody want to? take that further or would you like to share yours we don't have to really comment on anything being said we just listen and then someone else says something we're all learning it's an interactive space of just listening in holding space listening absorbing For some reason, I feel a heaviness right now. <laughs> um, and I'm asking why. And it's like the mask is doing something where it's saying, yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, you're here. And yeah, I'm here. And guess what? Or I don't know if it's my shadow. Maybe it's my shadow saying, I'm here. I'm here all the time. And Alicia wrote, um, inner work addict, basically. <laughs> like, even having to just, oh, it's just tiring. Like, you know, even for this moment to have to find words to, it's like there are words. But so what? <laughs> Like, 
I I feel heavy. Yeah, I also feel a bit the heaviness, <laughs> but I can, I'm not sure if it's my own exhaustion also. Um, I think for me, what I was also trying a little bit to get at in my poem was like, yeah, it's sort of, sometimes it's like functional masking and you also sort of choose to do it for a certain context or a certain space, but then it doesn't have to be like so um, constrictive or threatening if you manage to at least stay connected with your own um, truth. But then it can be such a fine line for that to start slipping also and then to start taking on other people's perceptions of you or expectations. And then yeah, being sort of misled by that and then adapting too much. So, look, so sometimes it's like worth the masking or the adapting for a specific context and a specific purpose, but then not to then sort of fall into the trap of like thinking that that's somehow the truth or my truth. Um, and also just moving in between different worlds with different, yeah, expectations or standards then I can see how I can put on the different hats. So I'm not any one of those hats, but then sometimes there can also be moments when I get confused and where I'm like, oh, I should have a stronger idea of who I am or what I am, like on this outwardly sense of appearance. But then I also realize, like, oh no, I can let it go and yeah, just listen inwards. And then that's my compass. And I and I I don't have to believe the masks that I am putting on, but it's sometimes a bit challenging <laughs> and they still influence our behavior and they also influence what we bring to, or what I bring to the table if I'm wearing different masks. One thing that comes to mind right now in my present uh, way of masking, like that just sort of brings on a mask to me is just being polite. So for example, here where I am in India, it's more like hunger versus habit. So there's meal times. I'm not hungry, but like meals are being served. And I was, I made it clear when I came like, you know, um, don't expect me to join in for dinner because I'm just like different in my way of eating and so forth. Um, but I noticed that there was to some level like, oh, it's a bit offensive that you're not joining in or you don't want to. And then I started being polite. But then I was like not feeling good about it because I, that these were not cert like certain things were not my eating habits. And I was eating actually a time where I'm not hungry. And I'm so I'm trying not to do that. I want to be more like if there's hunger, then I'll eat it rather than have it. And then being polite causes me to mask the authentic self or whatever it is that I really need. And then that leads to a level of discontentment. And so you're with the people, but you're like masked and um, you're not, you're not appearing as you are. Right. So you're being taken away from beingness and there's like a level of hypocrisy going on because you're not being authentic to your heart and your body. Um, so then what do you do? You can politely, you, you can, you can, you know, you can readjust that. And, and, and so I've done that and I'm trying to do that. And it's like, nobody's taking offense in the first place. So this idea that people will take offense, they'll be upset if we keep all of these things into consideration, we won't be able to take the next step. So 
uh, just be yourself. And I think if we conduct ourselves uh, politely, I mean, to whatever degree, it's enough. Um, further than that, you can't make everybody happy. And and that's that. So I'm opting out of just being unnecessarily polite. I've even joined a meal like by not eating, just like, you know, maybe just having some fruit or whatever it was, but not having the meal because I wasn't hungry and nobody minded. So I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, I'm just doing that now. So being polite doesn't help always. Yeah. I know. I had this fight yesterday with my mother. She was going crazy. Like she has this thyroid issue. But in my medications, I have to take two sachets of uh, for different predicaments. She wants me to have both of them at the same time because she doesn't trust me with the medicine. So I was like, I really, we both were shouting at each other. That, and then I was like, okay, I will take it on my own you don't have to give me medicine but that uh, conversation which I was you know not comfortable like I listen to everything what mom says and I don't like shouting at her I can shout at everyone but it the solution didn't came unless we had that hard talk unless I was Im impolite a bit Otherwise, it, it was we were going round in circles the whole week. So yeah, we have to be unapologetic sometimes. What comes up, I think, from all of this, what everyone has been saying is there's basically a thin line between egotism and authenticity. And for society to function, we may have to have certain masks. Like, I was just thinking, what would happen if everyone went out with, like, fully unmasked and tried to keep society together? And, like, the train driver would you know have a breakdown and then the train wouldn't go on time and then people would go come to work and just like i don't know sit and binge on netflix there and just i don't know it's just an interesting you know concept to think um and maybe that wouldn't at all be a problem because things would start to sort itself you wouldn't have like hidden neuroses because everyone would actually be in touch with themselves. I don't know the way of the Tao. Um, but there seems to be some form of like tension between the individual and society, which is causing us to have these masks. And um, I'm thinking of what I've studied about like child upbringing in different cultures and how um in some cultures toddlers are seen literally they're seen as insane beings and you shouldn't like at all um you shouldn't become angry with them you shouldn't you know think that they're at all responsible for anything because they're basically just nuts and then like maturing is to adapt to society maturing is to put the collective needs above your own and not be a troublemaker. And I think this is the tension also in my daily life. It's like, what is what is required of me for family, for work, for all these things to be able to function? And what is required for me to keep my sanity? And maybe for someone who's able to go into a cave and just meditate 24 hours, you can literally live as you like and i think that's one of the challenges for me regarding being unmasked is can i bring in some more of that um disagreeableness into what i do without being an asshole about it like can i be 
can I have firm boundaries and be authentic before it becomes like I'm too torn in between the responsibility to myself and the responsibility to the outside world. What I wanted to say was that I, I noticed that I'm in, it's a journey and um, it's a process and um, I'm noticing that even within the more intimate spaces that we're in, we're, we're interacting with individuals who are inner work addicts, right? They're like, when you know someone so close and you're not seeing them in their authentic self, just because of one thing that they are masked in, for example, for whatever that is, they are choosing to make that a um, across the board uh, rule. So then you never, they are emotionless on social media. They don't express Jack just because of that one thing that they're masking, whatever that is. And, and then in maybe their attire, um, in any sort of creativity, it's almost like they've gone dead. And that to me is like, um, it's worrisome because then now we are basically choosing to mask ourselves in so many areas of our life. And that is the most unattractive kind of friend to be with. Um, and that would be, I'm talking about myself, how that would feel. So I think it's important to acknowledge where we're masked, but it doesn't have to be like, you know, in every area, we need to follow that same masking rule because then there is nothing left. Um, it's like we're walking as dead corpses and that is the worst thing. Um, um, that is the worst thing. So, um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's not good. It's worrisome. It's worrisome because you're, you're witnessing a death of a friend or someone you know very closely and you're like that's not you though <laughs> you're not like that why are you not expressing yourself why are you not showing up why are you not being real because I know how real you are and uh, that's that's not the way that's not the way at all um, yeah that's it so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing this um, in my more intimate spaces and I'm um, I'm not satisfied with that Mo, do you want to say something mm. um I feel like um, I don't have anything, any, um, there is like a mask that you wear, you know, and it's kind of like the, like you said, like the roles you play and the things you, you know, you feel like, but we shouldn't attach ourselves to the masks we have. We, we feel like, we the roles we play you know and um i don't know it's good to like uh you know which which you were saying uh two things popped up the first in the words are the fogs that we see through so no matter what we're saying like we're never really saying anything it's like you have to see through what the person really is trying to say and then the other thing is, your body will go crazy if we, any yeah, I mean, go, go crazy if you don't, if like for, for in my experience, like when I lie to myself a lot, like my body re reacts to, to the mask that I I have, whether through anxiety or whether through a panic attack or, you know, just like disharmony in in every everything. So, um, 
I don't know if I, I feel like sometimes I, um, me unmasking myself is also a mask, you know, like saying too much, too much. And then you have to sit and say like, why am I doing that? And for what reason? So there's always like an intention behind my intention. And I feel like we have to, <laughs> can you hear me? I'm also at work. So the walls are thin. Can you hear me? So I'm kind of masking myself. Oh yeah, don't hear the words. You mean like the fog, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I feel like uh, also like our our journeys are the most true. Yeah, and you, yeah, and when I when I went when I had my manic episodes, that was the most authentic I was, you know. And and like we do have responsibilities, so I know when I'm wearing my yeah. And you, even like that, that mania is like, is like what is like a state that I feel everyone wants to be in, you know, when you're, yeah, when you're just really like not caring about what anyone thinks and you feel like so, um, um, like, you, yeah, that's the, yeah, I mean, but it's also not. I don't know, maybe we need it more because it did put things in order, even like for my family and for the people around me and alhamdulillah, like that needed to happen. But then how how do I, how do you, everything is like the mask and the unmask. I feel the unmasking is so important to like know what, what our truth is. So in these moments of unmasking, you you see yourself the, the clearest also. You know, you're like, oh, that's who I am because, and like the the quote that we, you put on the on the, sorry, Alicia, are you gonna say something? I keep, uh, be as you are, be as you appear to be, like even that, and then be as the mo like, and then it's the whole poem is about like nature and trying to be like n nature, so. Uh, but but that thing be as you are be as you appear to be like also us in the moments we're in we have we see who we are you know like we don't know who we are so even that unmasking is not like oh I'm that and like oh look I'm you know I'll because you know and I feel this way and that no it's like what what's happening like while I'm there what's coming up and and then you're like oh that's me because we don't know who we are Yani. And I feel what you said is so true also last thing in a like ego egotism and authenticity, like there's a very thin line between them, you know, and why am I doing what I'm doing and for what? So that's why I feel like I'm kind of receding. Like now I don't know what kind of mask I'm wearing, even in this conversation, because I feel like there are things that I haven't processed completely. And um, that's it. That's my mask also. Everything's a mask. <laughs> I just want to state that my previous... Thank you, May. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to state in my previous sort of little, you know, hyper-toned <laughs> expression, it was actually coming from a place of concern, um, you know, unattractive and all of that because if you know someone as a those and you don't see them in their full potential obviously it's like a mentor like an artistic mentor right and they know your capabilities and they're like why aren't you expressing that in your artwork like in your way and so it's coming from that and what I want to just maybe add on to that previous is that it's out of love we can put that through the lens of love but in the way of the dose those are those who are mirrors for one another so we have a space of mirrors where we can reflect off one another so we can ask ourselves could be our takeaway how can we be those mirrors or those on the path to becoming ourselves so that we can um we can actually help one another to be be unmasked because it's it requires a society in the past you know there were certain societies that were made out of the matrix and people lived off grid and they still do that till today and they choose to be that unmasked community and 
they're happier and whatnot, but that's not always practical for everybody. And so we can maybe ask ourselves within the circle that we know of friends in the physical or the virtual realm that we're close to, um, I guess the more we are, uh, I'm not sure, I don't have an answer for this. How can we support one another to be unmasked? And that also led me to right now reflecting while you're speaking, the idea of a, a spiritual guide. The spiritual guide, the true spiritual guide brings us back to ourselves and they help remove the, remove the masks, which are technically the equivalent of veils. They say there's about 170,000. You know, that's, that's, you know, probably subject to different opinions and whatnot. But let's say you take that opinion, there's about 70,000, sorry, 70,000 veils on the heart or masks. And through the facilitation, the gaze, the sohba, the interaction, the nisba, meaning the co connection with the guide, the masks are supposed to be lifted and that is very important. And then the guide that takes you onto that journey of the masks being lifted is probably more on the spectrum of the authentic guide. And when you lose your authenticity and you start masking yourselves on the mat on the path, then you know, I I I, I can't say they're false guides, but I would say, you know, question your path. Because I could say in my experience, let's just say, because you have to, I have to have some proof in what I'm saying. I've never felt a micro uh, management on how I'm supposed to be, act, say, do, whatnot through my guides. They've always just, it's almost like I have like this autonomous way I can be. And I'm still like feeling that I'm connected to the overall path. But I'm my, yeah, like I can just keep evolving and the unpredictable self of me can just keep changing and no one's going to question it. And I've never been asked to, you know, notch it down or notch it up. So that's important uh, through the guide that they let you be you and help you become you through just their presence, maybe. And when it's not happening, you, you know, check yourself, maybe. So. So we can wrap, uh, inshallah. Yeah, even before you mentioned the, the veils of the heart, uh, I also thought about the, the concept of veils in yoga. They're a bit fewer, at least uh, the major ones. There are five. Um, and basically from the most obvious to the most subtle and then behind that is your true essence um, yeah your true reality but if you're hanging out in that true reality then simultaneously being this one in this one is definitely something for a master so um maybe what i'm thinking after we wrap this up is to on the note of what do we do actually is to just i guess learn and this is actually something also that was taught to me during the training uh that i took was that a yogi is someone who is able to move between different dimensions freely meaning you're not a slave of any of the sort of dimensions so to move between different expressions of myself or different realities different masked or unmasked states and not get stuck and just be able to see all of those as some manifestation of reality or existence but yeah, let's wrap up and 
I hope that you would, those of you who want to, uh, post your poems in the group so that we can read them again, because all of them were very um, poignant, moved me at least. So I'd, I'd like to be able to read them again, if you want to, please. And thank you once again to everyone for such beautiful presence. It's always such a pleasure. Take care. Thank you and salams to everyone. Ma'asalama. To be unmasked continued. <laughs> sure.